So today I have something that is really out of the ordinary. This is Sovereign, and this is their calendar watch. It's a watch they're actually going to be kickstarting uh, sometime soon, I believe in May. Uh, and they sent me this watch to review. This is a prototype, uh, and it has a very interesting case. It, of course, has a very interesting dial because of that interesting movement. That is the calendar movement. I believe it is a Miyota 9100, so it's a 9000 series Miyota movement. However, it is a full calendar version. It's a movement that I've actually featured on the channel a few times now, and I'm always very impressed by it because it is pretty cool, uh, and it gives you a watch at an affordable price that looks very complicated. Uh, and speaking of complicated, the case on here is sort of an octagon. It's kind of faceted. Uh, it has a really interesting bracelet. The lugs on here are very interesting. Sort of an H-link bracelet, but it's a different style, I guess you can call it. There's little notches on each one of the corners of the H portion of those links. Uh, really interesting bracelet and a really interesting case. Even the uh, lugs are very angular, as you can see, uh, and turned down really nicely. Just a really interesting design, something that you don't see every day. Um, and of course, the color of the dial, what they paired here is sort of a Tiffany blue color, an aquamarine color, whatever you want to call it, with orange. So there is orange accents in the actual chapter ring, uh, and then you get applied indices, and then you have three subdials. Those are in a darker blue, and then you get an orange subdial hand right here, uh, and that is a 24 hour dial, and then you get the month and the day. Those get silver hands, like the uh, actual hour minute. The hour minute are just stick hands, and you have a little bit of loom in those, and then you have a running seconds hand. That running second hand is in orange as well. Then you have a power reserve. The hand on there is in orange, so there's a lot of combinations going on. Uh, the power reserve is at 12 o'clock. Uh, and then you get a date there. It's just between the four and the five o'clock. Uh, it is color matched to the dial. However, the uh, actual font is in white. So it is really hard to see. Uh, so either you love that or you hate it. I'm actually on the fence about it. I don't really like dates to begin with. Uh, this is a very busy watch to begin with as well. Uh, they're putting a date here, but then they're putting a white font. It's really hard to distinguish the, the dial and that font uh, because that font is so light. It's white against a light blue background. Uh, very, very hard to see. Sort of have a ring that is applied at the six o'clock sub-register, uh, and that is a 24-hour scale. That is a 24-hour indicator. Inside of there, it just says calendar, and then 100 meters, because this is 100 meters of water resistance. And then that uh, power reserve at the 12 o'clock also has a little sort of crescent that goes from the 11 o'clock indice, uh, or index, excuse me, to the uh, two o'clock index. As you can see, it's sort of connects those two, uh, and it is a power reserve, of course, so uh, there you go. Uh, unwinding the crown, you do have a screwing crown. The crown on here is small. I'll do measurements uh, in just a minute, but it is a little small. All you need to do is wind it, because this does hand wind, and you could see the power reserve gaining power right there. Uh, really nice, and then this uh, pusher right here actually changes the month, uh, and I believe the rest is actually controlled through the crown, and you can change the day and, of course, the date. And that is the second position for the crown. Uh, the bracelet on here and the case. So the case is basically a brush case except for the uh, bezel, where the bezel is on the top of the bezel, uh, polished. Everything else is brushed. Even the sides of the bezel is brushed, uh, basically entirely brushed. And then the uh, actual bracelet is a combination of polishing and brushing, as you can see. Um, the uh, pusher here is polished. The uh, crown is signed with the S logo. Uh, it does screw in, as I mentioned, so uh, screwed-in crown does give you the 100 meters of water resistance. Very interesting bracelet. You do have the S logo here. One of the concerns that I do have about this is if this is part of this end link, and if it is, that is good. If it is not, then that means they glue it to this uh, end link, and that means since you have to fold over one side and then the other, there's a possibility that you could actually sort of uh, nick it and it will pop off. I have seen that happen before when they are glued, so that is definitely something to keep in mind, uh, and I think they are trying to improve this, so if they are listening, uh, something to definitely keep in mind. It is enameled, and it is black, 
It's the logo. It actually looks really good. Uh, you have quick release on the uh, on the bracelet, double deployant butterfly, and you have screw links in this very thick bracelet, actually. And then you get to see that Miyota movement from the back. It has a custom rotor. Uh, it is a Miyota uh, rotor, which has been customized. Uh, so I like to uh, make sure that is, uh, is clarified. Uh, sometimes people call it a custom rotor. It's technically not a custom rotor. It's a rotor that comes with the watch and then they customize that rotor. Um, so there's a big difference, but it is nice that they customize the rotor at all. Um, and of course you get to see the movement from the back. It is a little bit thicker because it is a little bit more complicated than the normal, maybe 9015 or 9039. Uh, so it is slightly thicker of a movement. Uh, and we will do measurements in just a second, as I mentioned. Uh, one thing I do wanna note is that they sign the name on the side here. I hope they decide not to do that or give you the option not to have that, uh, because as you guys know, I am not a fan of that. Um, you have a very faceted case, and I think it's really an interesting design. I don't think you need this. It's a little too much. It's already sort of something that people are either gonna love immediately or hate immediately. Um, I don't think you're really gonna be on the fence about this watch. It has sort of a polarizing design. Um, and I think adding elements like this sort of is unnecessary because like I said, you already have a very interesting design, something that you don't see very often. They even put these little notches, as I mentioned, on each one of the bracelet links. And I will you know, do a close up of that so you can see. Um, they thought about a lot on this watch. They put a lot of design elements into it. Uh, no need to add any more. Now, it's not a huge watch. It is, I believe, um, just at 39 millimeters, so 38.8, 38.9 uh, is basically what I'm measuring at the actual bezel. It's a little bit smaller than that, I believe. Oh, no, it's uh, 39 on the spot, on the, on the dot, so there you go. The crown, as I mentioned, is very small. 5.2 millimeters for a 39 millimeter watch. It is on the small side. Uh, I think it would look better with a bigger crown and something that's a little bit more bespoke. Everything on this case is sort of interesting except for that crown. It looks like a generic crown. It is signed, uh, but I think that they should probably do something a little bit different. Thickness on here is 14.7 millimeters. That is thick. Uh, it does have a domed sapphire crystal, but uh, like I said, that is thick considering this is only 100 meters of water resistance. And the other thing here is the lug to lug. So the lug to lug on here is actually nice if you have this on a strap, nice uh, if you have it on a strap, but, uh, so I'm getting, sorry, there we go, 46.6, uh, but the effective lug to lug here is a lot bigger because of the links on here, the end links, 57.6 millimeters. Um, it's not an integrated bracelet, but the way that the end links work on here, uh, it doesn't actually turn down. This is very, very big. So will wear bigger on smaller wrists. On my wrist, it does not make a difference, but for someone with a smaller wrist, this will be a problem. Even though it's a 39 millimeter watch uh, with a smaller wrist, I would suggest getting this on a strap if you are interested in it. Uh, and that is kind of unfortunate because uh, this is an interesting bracelet. Uh, and I think it kind of goes with the design, a very interesting design, you get an interesting bracelet. Uh, that Miyota 9039 hacks hand winds. It is very similar, as I mentioned, to the 9015 or the 9039. Uh, however, you're getting that date complication, so you're getting a full calendar on here, which is really interesting. And you're getting that power reserve, which is really nice as well. You, this is loom, so we will do a loom shot really quickly. Let me show you what I have on my wrist, then we will talk about price, and then we'll do a loom shot. Today, I have on a new watch to me. This is my Grand Seiko. Um, this is my brand new Grand Seiko, brand new to me, as I mentioned, it is a used watch, um, a, uh, a Grand Seiko chronograph. So it's a spring drive chronograph is basically the most complicated, uh, spring drive movement that they make currently. Um, and speaking of, you know, busy watches, you know, this is a very busy dial as well, uh, kind of equally as busy. Um, so you have to like this look. If you don't like it, you're not going to like this watch. And like I said, this is a very busy dial and you have a lot of, sort of design elements in that bracelet. Uh, but there you go, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. Uh, this watch wears pretty decently on my wrist, even though those end links are very big, uh, but it does wear nice on my seven and a half inch wrist. It does wear thick, as you can see, it sits pretty high on the wrist. It does feel pretty heavy on the wrist as well. It is a heavy watch uh, because of that thick case. Um, but 
interesting in general, like a very interesting watch. So this watch comes in at $515. That's what they're asking for it uh, when the Kickstarter actually goes live. Uh, and I believe that will be going live in May. Some point, I will put a link down below to their homepage. Uh, and if the Kickstarter is up, I'll put a link there as well to the Kickstarter. $515, you're getting a very interesting setup here. You're getting a very interesting movement, a very interesting case, a very interesting bracelet. Uh, it's interesting. However, if you don't like the look of this watch, uh, it doesn't matter how interesting it is. Uh, you're definitely not going to love this watch if you don't like the look of this sort of, um, you know, different styled case, different style bracelet, the whole thing. Uh, you either love it or you hate it, like I said. Anyway, quickly, a loom shot. Well, there you have it. The loom isn't insane, but it's not bad. It's not liberally applied. It's okay. It's not very, very bright. I wish they actually loomed the second hand. Um, I think this is a very interesting watch for $515. I keep on using that word interesting because I think if you don't like the case shape, the design of the bracelet, you're really not going to like this watch. It's not a classic looking watch. It's sort of a new design that they came up with that is sort of uh, just a very weird looking case, a very weird looking bracelet, not something that you normally see every day. Uh, so that's why a lot of people will not like it, but some people will gravitate towards this because of its uniqueness. Anyway, uh, I think there's some improvements that can be made. I think the improvements are that crown, it should be bigger, a little bit more in line with what the look is of the watch rather than something that looks like it's kind of off the shelf. Uh, and then the name on the side, I wish they didn't print the name on the side. I don't like that. Uh, the male end links or the uh, end links that are very, very sort of cuff-like, uh, if they could correct that in some way and maybe add a little bit more loom, that wouldn't hurt. Uh, other than that, very interesting. Oh, and then the bracelet, there's that little S. I hope that doesn't pop off. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how they actually put that on. If I find that out, I'll throw that down in the comments below. Uh, hopefully that is all one solid link. That would be a lot better than a glued on piece. Uh, but tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.